This meeting is being recorded. Hey guys, how are you? It is Allison. I'm so happy to be here today. We're going to be talking about time. I want you guys to be very, very focused. I want you to, we're going to be really purposeful with our time. Our topic today is who owns your time and I want you to take ownership of time. Really, it is taking ownership of the now that we've been given. Time is a concept and I really believe it's an illusion and it's an illusion that we are bound to and we are going to take time back. We're going to take our lives back. When we take time back, we take our lives back. I'm asking you today, who owns your moment? Who owns your now? So I have like a lot of different things that I want to point out to you, but I want you to consider like three or four things, okay? I'm asking you now, who owns your time? Do you understand that? The moment that you're in now. Last time we talked about, and I bring it up, is that be prepared. Don't start your day until you finish it. Make sure that you do your brain dump, that you then decide, that means taking ownership, of what things are going to be in your day that day. If you make a mistake, it's just a growing and learning experience. We never lose, we learn, ever. We never lose, we learn. So now you're going to be prepared because that's part of owning. Okay. Then I'm going to give you a couple of, um, concepts, tools that I want you to utilize and consider when you're doing the tasks, tasks throughout your day. I want you to consider something. We have this tendency to put tasks as time. Somehow tasks are very highly associated with time. Like we have to do these things within this time and we have to run. We have, we're like on a, this like thing that's like moving and we have to hurry, jump on, get something done. And then like, it's like a rush stress experience. Our mindset must change in order to change our life. So in order to change our life about time, a concept that's very necessary is we need to number one, Ask ourselves the question, like I have said before, are you experiencing time in a state of lack or in a state of abundance? Typically we experience time the way we experience everything else. You experience other things in lack and or in abundance. How do you see your life? Is your life filled? Is it something where there's more th that, that life is available, that things are available to you, that you don't have to struggle and fight and, everything's separate from you. So you have to work hard to get there and you have to like stress and strain because stress and strain is about lack. So I want you to consider those concepts when we're thinking about time. Now, a very practical thing for you to do is number one, I want you to notice how long things take. I've mentioned that, but there's a reason I'm mentioning it is that things take a certain amount of time. And as people, we have a tendency to project more time. We believe that things either take more time than they actually do or less time than they actually do, depending upon our state of lack or abundance, depending upon our fear level, depending upon, you know, victim mentality. You know, very often if we're in a state of victimhood, we believe we're like, oh, I have to do this very long thing. And you ever notice when somebody like elongates the words, it's saying like, oh, this takes so long. I have to go to the I have to go walk to the bathroom and then I have to go pick up the pencil on the floor and then I have to go walk downstairs and get my <laughs> coffee. It sounds longer and more arduous and just more victim-y. No. Okay. So you want to know how long to say, oh my God, I have to do the dishes. You know, dishes really take five minutes. If you don't have a dishwasher, maybe 10. How long do dishes really take? 15? Probably not unless you had a huge party the night before and they're like all over the counter. So we want to assign the right amount of time to, in our mind, to things, to tasks, to experiences. Oh, this is going, you know, it's, you know, everything takes 30 minutes to get there. Well, if it's an hour away, it doesn't take 30 minutes. You know what I mean? So you want to have a realistic perspective on how long it takes you. The other thing is, is that as you have that realistic perspective, you have a point that you're standing on and you have an understanding about where you're going to put things in your day. 
So we will move, when you look at, I use dishes as an example because I think it's simple, it's easy to look at. So if you look at a mound of dishes in your sink and you're like, oh, to me, get it done. If it's going to take five minutes, just do it. Make it happen, you know, put it on your, put it on one of your priorities and you get that out of the way. But I'm not telling you to do that if it's not going to work. You may look at it sometime and say, oh, you know what? There are things that are much more important that I'll feel better about doing today than not. And I'm going to do that. So, you know, it, you want to be the one who's deciding how things go. Well, I said to you that I was going to mention codependency, and I am, because we attach a lot of meaning to time in regard to people, in regard to our people-pleasing, in regard to societal norms, in regard to what it's right to do, what's not right to do, what we shouldn't leave, what we should do, blah, 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 all of that. And I really want you to consider and really, really shift in your thinking about who is in charge of the time and the way that you spend it. And it doesn't mean that someone's actively outside of you making you do something or telling you to do something. It's the perception you have about that person, place, thing. You know, oh, I know that person would probably prefer if I do this, or I'm going to do this because it's going to make them like me more, or I'm going to, and we need to be honest with ourselves about that. You know, we have a tendency not to do that. I want to throw, throw out a concept to you, and it's abstract, about time and about debt. Um, if you uh, find yourself um, really always feeling obligated and always feeling that you owe someone something, there is a possibility that you always feel like you're running out of time and you should be doing more, you should be helping more, you should have been there more, you should have done this. That's this concept of being in debt in regard to other people, situations, and it relates to time. You're, you have a debt to time, which may be related to human beings, okay? Another thing is, is that you will notice that if you have, if people owe you, or if you feel that you owe others, let's forget about people owing you for a minute. You feel that you owe others something, that you are falling short, that you're not good enough, that you haven't done enough, that you haven't been enough, that you haven't made them happy enough. Any of those things that you have in your mind, consider this. What happens is we have a tendency to, when we believe that we are in a state of owing, we usually are saying, I'm sorry a lot. We're usually apologetic, apologetic and saying, I feel bad. These are all codependent use. It is a codependent use of language. You will then have a, a, an attachment or an indebtedness to time with other people. So there will be obligations. So obligations are kind of this kind of moral or legal, <laughs> you know, like, a state that you have toward other people, like this moral commitment or this kind of sense that you have to do or be or spend time with or whatever. And you want to consider who is owning your time real estate? Who is owning the moment that you're in? I don't believe we have anything other than the moment that we're in. There is nothing else. That's the world we're in. That's what we're living in. And it is the most safest place to be it is the most abundant place to be. It is the happiest place to be. It is the place to be, is to be in the now, okay? So I'm gonna go back now to the concept of number one, how long do the tasks that I am lamenting over, how long do they take, okay, realistically, that's one thing. Then we're gonna talk about Parkinson's law of triviality. And what that means is, is that uh, time expands, I shouldn't say time, tasks or things that we need to do or want to do, tasks expand to the amount of time that we give them. Work complicates to the amount of time allotted to it. It's that type of a concept. So if I have two weeks to finish a paper, I will be up until midnight, two week mark, finishing that paper. If I have two days to finish a paper, you bet your butt I'm going to have that paper done in two days. I had to write an article. I literally had months to do it. You know how long it took me? 10 minutes. Okay. And I did it last minute, 
hit the send button right at 1201 when it was due. So that is something taking all the time. It took whatever amount of time, but it really only took 10 minutes. So what I want you to consider is if you're going to own your time, you're going to own your deadlines. You're not going to listen to the deadline. Oh, that doesn't have to be done until then. Well, okay. But if you want to clear your brain and you want to be in charge of your life, then if you know you have something a task, you're going to give it a deadline. I use my timer for everything. I use my timer for everything. I set my timer. I go, okay, um, set timer for 15 minutes. That avoids distractions. That keeps me going. That keeps me where I need to be on time. And it keeps me from moving from one task to another. Because that's the other point that I want to make to you guys that I want you to remember. I used it last week, the week before. You stay where you are until it's done because it creates a depth inside of you. It creates a sense of confidence. It, can, it creates a sense of ownership of your own life that once these things are done, you have this kind of depth of experience that brings this kind of stability and peace in your life. And if you try it, you will see. You will have peace. Another thing is you want to consider each day, and I, I want to throw this out to you. I, I look in, uh, like, I look at quarters, you know, uh, what do I want to accomplish this quarter? You know, what, what am I accomplishing this day? What, you know, what is this day going to look like? What is this week going to look like? The month, what is the quarter? You know, and I, I, I have goals for quarters, and, you know, and it's, they're all different types of things that I'm going to be there by this time. If you don't know where you're going, if you don't know where you want to land at the end of this quarter, then you're not going to know what to do today. You're not going to know what's most important today. Because if you want to be in charge of your life and you want to advance your life, be in charge of your year. Know what are the things that I will be super jazzed about if at the end of this year they actually happened. And they're not just going to land in your lap. They, they come from being in charge of your life and being the creator of your life instead of the reactor to the life that's landed in your lap. And that's the command of time. That's also the command of our relationships with other people. It's the command of where we sit in this life, our positioning and what we do with life as it flutters around us that we create from within and we create through thought, feeling, belief, action, to we create our outer world, you understand? So we're gonna be in charge of our state. Okay, back to what I'm saying. So think about the, the thing I talked about when you start something, you finish it. We're talking about quarters, so this is just an example. So let's say you have, um, let's say we're at the beginning of a quarter, let's say it's whatever, it's January, and we're considering what, where we want to be at the end of March 31st. Okay, where do I want to be? Is there a 31st in March? Yes, there is. Okay, where do I want to be March 31st? Okay, so now you say, here we go. Um, I want to accomplish this by March 31st. Now, here's my question. If you accomplished three main things each week, like things that were things that advanced you and they don't have to be big that's what i want you to understand they don't have to be big think about three things accomplished a week for 12 weeks that's 36 things accomplished in a quarter do you think that 36 meaningful things would bring you a good outcome at the end of a quarter that's a lot of things. That's a lot of experiences. That's a lot of movement toward something. However, people have a tendency with anxiety and stress to put 10 things in their day, eight things in their day. And if you consider the things that they put in that day, how many of the, now those things, maybe at the end of a quarter, you have 56 things or whatever, you know, that you've, that you've done. But did those things, did the busy work get you there? You want to consider the value of the task that at hand. Is that task bringing me somewhere? 
because yes, we have all these filler things. We have dishes, we have like this appointment to do this thing or that thing, but that appointment, I'm not talking about a meeting or something that's going to advance something. I'm talking about like, um, I don't know, like I got to bring the garbage out. I don't know. Like these little diddly things. We put so much stress and strain on those things and they will fill up all of the time because of procrastination, which I'm going to get to. They will fill up all of the time. And the thing that falls by the wayside is the thing that's advancing you. So people will focus on maintenance of life which keeps them in yesterday. It just keeps them in a like loop of life. You know, oh, I got to do this and I got to do this and I got to do blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to tell you something. I make decisions about my day, my week, that if I see that the things that are assigned to my day are just maintenance of life, I'm just going to maintain the life I have. And I'm not doing that. So my things need to not be maintenance only. We have to do maintenance. That's important because it's a structure around our life. It keeps our life running smoothly. However, if you don't do the thing that's going to take you somewhere else, the more important task, like I'm going to advance myself in this way, that means you're going to be, that means you're going to be doing work into the future, into the unknown, into the novice, into the thing that maybe you haven't learned yet or something that is going to actually take you somewhere. When you schedule joy in your day, you're advancing your state of being. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if you only schedule joy and then, um, and I don't mean you shouldn't be joyful all day. I don't mean that, but, and then you don't do maintenance, maintenance will pile up and then you'll be behind. So you don't want to do that either. However, if you are living in a busy work, environment constantly fluttering and busy because it's a state of being that you're addicted to i can promise you you're not going to advance you'll just stay in the life of a busy person who's stressed who's strained and that's our female culture right now by the way you understand that right that what we're doing now is we are turning our backs on that like that and we're like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going that way. I'm not going that way anymore. I'm not following everybody at the bus stop. I'm not following everybody who's coffee clutching about how stressful their life is and how busy their life is. Because I'm going to tell you your other assignment. You will not ever, as long as you live until the day you are planted in that ground or whatever you do with your body, you will not say that you're... No, no, you're not doing that anymore because you're commanding your body to hear that and feel that our body believes everything we tell it. So we want to treat our body as if it's a puppy, as if it's something that we're in charge of. And we say, no, 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 honey, calm down. This is what we're going to do today. And what we're going to do today is going to feel good. And what we're going to do today is going to produce peace. And what we're going to do today is going to advance us. And what we're going to do today is going to feel good at the end of the day. And that's what we're going to do today. That's the way our day is going to be handled. When you hear that other chitter, the chitter in the background, the static that says, oh no, what am I going to do? There's so much to do. And you know what? They're going to be mad at me. No. You hear me? You're not doing that anymore. We are literally, remember what we're doing here. We're changing the way we think. We're changing the thoughts and the feelings and the belief systems that project into our future and create the same shit that they that created yesterday. We're not doing that. We are projecting into the future joy. We're projecting into the future production. We're project we're projecting into the future peace. Is it possible to be peaceful, productive and joyous? Have a question think about it. Answer that question. If you don't believe that's possible, you have a faulty belief system. I know because I had a faulty belief system. It didn't feel possible to me. Practice every day. Do not give up. This is how my life will be. My life will be peaceful. Not will be. No. My life is peaceful, productive, and joyous because I decided to own my day. I decided to own my moment. When you slip out of your moment into your past, into a thing of like stress, blah, blah, you're not going to beat yourself up. You're going to say, oh, honey, you went backwards because 
that's what you're used to. You're addicted to it. And we all are. So we're going to, and the culture is screaming it. So, okay, stop. <sighs> Regroup. How do you want your day to be? Is though, are those five tasks that feel stressful more important than your, than your state of being by the end of the day? And when I say that, I don't want anybody to cop out on me and lay on the couch and say, you know, my state of being is much more important than getting things done. Because I can tell you right now, you've come to the wrong place because I get shit done all the time, but I prioritize peace. So when I feel my body going, I'm stressed. No, we stop right there. We stop right there because rushing, moving, straining. No, we pull back inside. We take back our time. We say, okay, you know, did I put, did I bite off more than I can chew? It's a great question. You know, you want to ask yourself, is this, did I create busy work for myself today? Is the, the, are the things that I put in my day, <laughs> Like, are they things that will resolve themselves by the end of the week? Think of all the things on your to-do list that you no longer have to do because somehow they just kind of resolve themselves. I mean, that happens, right? So we don't want to make busy work. We want to simplify. So this is the concept. We're changing our mindset. To, we're going to choose less. We're going to go deeper. Remember, when we do less, we create more but we do it all the way. We do it in a deeper way. We do it in a, in, a, in a way that creates greatness. So when you're producing peace, while at the same time finishing and completing tasks, because you're training your body not to move from one thing to another, that's an advancement. When you create um, like, no, I know that by the end of this quarter, I know that I want this kind of stuff to happen. So therefore, I'm going to stay the course with this, this one thing in this simple way that's going to produce the result that I'm looking for. I want to make a little mention about procrastination, okay? So procrastination is basically avoidance. So this is my question to you. It can, we can really complicate it, and we could also say procrastination has something to do with you know, I put things off basically because I don't want to do them, you know? And so that means that something else is in charge of the thing that you're putting off. So if you really are considering and if your, your baseline is like, I'm going to choose peace, I'm going to choose productivity and joy, like those three things together, you know, that burning task that I'm putting off, what is it producing? Stress, it's producing, a, you know, a burden on you. You know, that's not in alignment with abundance. You know, a procrastinated thing is in line with lack. A procrastinated thing is in line with avoidance. So if you notice that you avoid other things, like you avoid looking at debt or you avoid, you know, conflict or you avoid, it's a very similar thing. So it's like, it's about fear. It's about uh, so many different things. It could be about not believing that you, you can or because you just don't want to. That's part of training yourself to do the things that you don't want to do because you're going to own your life and you're going to create your life. The procrastinated task, the thing that you don't do, is something that then has influence over you. It takes you hostage. It controls you in the background because it's something on your list. It's on your plate, but you're just not looking at it. It's like, it's like, it's, you know, it's like the concept, it's fear. F everything and run instead of face everything and recover. Face everything. So the thing to me, and this I'm going to ask you to do, is that you, while you're changing your mindset to a mindset of everything, is, I own it, I plan it, I'm in charge of it, my, I live in a, in a state of, you know, abundance of I'm enough, you know, I'm going to decide how this goes. This is, I'm fulfilled, now you, I have enough time, I have enough of everything that I need, because how did I get this far without having enough? I did get this far and it's the biggest lie ever told, you know, that we don't have enough. We do have enough. Okay. It's a, it's a state of fear. Procrastination is a state of fear. It keeps you stuck 
in things burdening you. So if you're going to be in peace, you're going to prioritize. If it burdens me, it can't stay. So, so stopping procrastination is I'm taking charge of my emotional well-being. So if you're burdening me, I'm addressing it. Same thing with a relationship. You have a relationship that's burdening you, you're going to address it. Now, either you're going to address it directly with the person, except when to do, do so would injure you or them. You don't address a relationship that is toxic and you're not even in it. Don't do that. But if, but you're going to address it in yourself. Like, is this, is my mind about this relationship taking me hostage and how can I keep shifting away? What is the outcome of that relationship's burden on me and my thinking and my feeling and my day? Does a, does a person, place or thing take up time, take up your moment, forget about the time. Does it take up your now? When you're in your now, do you want to be spending it there? Feeling that? Struggling over that? No, 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 no. We take control. We take charge and we create our lives. We don't react to it. Procrastinating is reacting to a burdensome thought about a burdensome task that really is something you should make your bitch. That really should never have anything over you ever. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Okay. I will see you next time you're going to do your PDF and I just adore you. And I'm just wondering if I should just recap. So I want you to consider number one, you're going to know how long tasks are. You're going to understand that work expands and complicates to the time that you give it. So you're going to assign time to things. And if you have to add more time to your timer, like I'll be like, okay, I'm doing my dishes. I'll give myself whatever this is, set your timer 10 minutes. And then if it takes another five, that's okay, but you're in charge. You're like, okay, this is how much time I'm giving you. So reset your, um, your deadlines so that it doesn't expand. Procrastination is like the fuel for Parkinson's law of triviality because when I apply procrastination to that law and I put things off and say, oh, I could do it tomorrow or I could do it next week, we're expanding the complication and the burden of that task. And when we say, no, I take ownership, I'm going to create my own deadline. I'm going to be disciplined over my body because my body's not in charge of me. I'm in charge of my body. I'm in charge of the outcomes of my life. I'm creating my life. Procrastination is not a thing for me because I do not F everything and run. I face everything and recover so I can have peace in my life. I also bring things to the end. I take, if I start them, I finish them because then I have a depth of myself and I'm in charge of the tasks that are before me. They don't control me. I finish them so that I can have a state of peace and confidence. We only choose major things in our day that are going to advance us. We make sure we at least have three of those, five of those a week. I like the concept of having one major thing. I never ever have a day that I do not have one major productive thing that I'm going to, you bet your ass I'm doing. And I usually have five in a day, but they're major. If I have a lot of maintenance that I need to do, I sprinkle that throughout the week, but you would be very surprised when you add the valuable things in your day and you make sure they become just a part of your life. Like to me, Working out every day, like that's valuable. It's going to bring me somewhere. It's always going to produce more energy. Energy promotes energy. You, you bet your ass that that is a priority to me because, and even before I got on this video, I was jumping up and down because I want to bring my energy up. And if I feel it coming down, I'm in charge of my energy that's in the now that I'm in. That's just, put that in your pipe and smoke it. That's just, that was for free. Okay, so now think about that. I just went off track. Okay, what do I have here? You're going to finish everything. You're going to choose less. You're going to go deep and you're going to think about your, your expansion. Like, you know, how far am I going to go in my quarter, right? You know, think about quarterly, you know, where you want to advance. Remember, being in charge of your time means you're in charge of your life. It means that you're a creator and not a reactor. 
that's all it is. Love you. See you soon. Do you PDF? <laughs>